Hey all. this episode we're going to work on uh, replacing the lock cylinder in the steering column which uh, currently is pretty messed up and we're going to see if we can get things worked out with the ignition switch where it actually starts from the key in the column instead of the key in the column and pushing the button under the dash. Stay tuned! So the horn uh, sleeve is the initial ring after you pull the horn button off. It is on with Torx. And if you don't have a set of Torx bits that go this small, this is a handy little tool to have right here. And it looks like they're T30s. They're not torqued real hard, so they come loose pretty easy. So that comes off like that, and then we see why the horn doesn't work, because there is no spring or button or anything where the horn goes. So that's the first dilemma right there solved, and fortunately I bought a new kit for that. Okay, so we uh, pulled off the... Uh, round cone for the horn button that's currently not working because there's no spring and plunger behind it and we've got the steering wheel tool steering wheel puller tool uh, on and ready to start leveraging the steering wheel off the shaft so with a couple quick turns of the old wrench the steering wheel is now removed and we can begin working on the column itself okay so after we pull this guy off, it's just a little plastic cover. You've got uh, three slots in it. You stick a screwdriver in and kind of pry the clips back off the metal plate. You get down to the snap ring plate. So I've got my uh, puller put in place. It's going to uh, press down on this plate to take the pressure off of it. And then I'll be able to pull the snap ring out of here. All right, so we removed the star ring and my puller, and we're now ready to take the screws loose that hold in the uh, turn signal mechanism, and we'll be ready to go after the ignition switch. All right, so after removing the screws, you've got just enough slack to get this pulled back, and you'll see way down in there is Let's see if I can get my screwdriver and show you. Way down in there, right there, is a bolt that holds in the ignition lock cylinder. Okay, there's the, uh, the bolt removed and then the lock cylinder. Comes right up. Hey, all this is that part of the show where I'm going to stop and ask you if you would just click on that like button, please, and go ahead and click on the subscribe button too. Huh? You're going to want to see what's going on. You don't have to watch all our videos, but if you subscribe, you'll get an alert whenever we uh, put something up. You'll know it's there, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Okay. The lock cylinder is in. You can see the keys dangling from the dash. So two problems we had with this truck when we bought it. A, um, you could not start the truck from the lock cylinder. You could only roll it forward, get it to buzz, and then you had to use a button that they had put under the dash here. The other problem was you could pull the key out and actually unlock the lock cylinder without a key in it. So you can't do that now. It's actually locked without the key. The key is in the switch. 
We roll forward, we got buzzer. Hey, looky there. I can start it on the column now. It is Christmas. Okay, so we're reassembled now. We'll test the blinkers. That all works. And we'll try the truck again. Marvelous. Marvelous.